Right, next stop, next day, and uh, here we go. So, I am going this time again, it looks like, and I'm actually pretty good on stats. I haven't made a single mistake yet so far, I believe. Um, What would a tsundere demon extortionist uh, girl would like about a guy? That's the question. Um, mm. I don't think she prefers smarts too much. Boldness, maybe. Creativity of how to kill demons, maybe. Charm, I possibly. Thinking, yeah, like boldness and charm, probably. Um, I guess I go but... with charm because that's the lowest out of the three that I suspect that they might be needed. So this one is charm. Let's go. So that day at the camp dome, you all play the classic children's game. The floor is lava. Oh, with a twist, the floor is literally lava. You are all hopping here and there, trying to survive the dangers of you know lava. But then one of your teammates falls. Yikes. He's sinking into the lava, dying in a slow, agonizing death. You offer a hand, but it's too late. Before disappearing under the hot lava, he whispers his last words. You, your hand looks great. It does. You gain plus two charm for a nice <laughs> compliment. A lot of sacrifice for a compliment, but fine enough. Later you see of Av Aravi. Oh, finally, and we have a choice here, maybe. And Dahlia training together for the next dome games. They are both covered in blood, and the ground is littered with disem disemboweled bodies. That's very... Uh, Picturesque. It's terrifying, <laughs> but they both look extremely hot, covered in blood. Hell yeah, Carnage! What's our next training exercise, fellow warrior? Yeah. My all-time favorite, the three-legged race. We crush the next of our enemies with, at the camp rival camp, all with our in-sync stepping. Fuck yeah! They look surprisingly well together, despite their pretty different uh, looks. <laughs> Um, Aravi right, grabs right. the rope to tie her leg to Dahlia's, but Dahlia blushes and shies away. Oh wow, Aravi, I didn't realize that you wanted to get more serious. What are you talking about, you muscular juggernaut? Well, it seems like you're suggesting some kind of fusion. Call me old-fashioned, but I take fusion very seriously. It's the most erotic method of teamwork. Oh, oh I get it. Listen, Dahlia, you are totally right that fusion can be sexual, but doesn't have to be. Yeah, it's true. Just look at me and Aravi. The bond between Curse and Curse is technically a form of fusion. And we are totally platonic best friends forever. Whoa, platonic fusion? That sounds awesome and powerful and emotionally nourishing. I know, right? Okay, we totally have to do this fusion. We're already unstoppable, but once we're fused, we'll be un-unstoppable. Wait, isn't that a bad thing? Uh, yeah, I think that's like, you know, like, un unifying the un, which is just basically a yeah, minus minus mix of the double boss. Negative. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby! Time for some platonic leg stuff! No, wait. Fusing can be very intense. We need to make sure our friendship is as strong as possible in our hearts and in our legs before we do this. That totally makes sense. My buddy Rolf fused with an acquaintance he didn't know that well. Long story short, the fusion went wrong and they accidentally switched buttholes. Yikes. Oof. Alright, first off, friendship strengthening. And after that, platonic 3 act fusion! You are totally on board with this incredibly logical train of thought. <laughs> but how will you strengthen Dahlia and uh, Aravi's friendship so they can fuse properly? Uh, braid the most badass friendship bracelet ever, or arrange a casual yet platonic date for the girls' legs that they can get to know each other better. Mm. Mm. I mean, let's be honest here, there is nothing stronger than friendship bracelets, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's never a bad thing when legs girls' date. legs come together. Hmm, I, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a, um, like, a choose between the two, like, you know, one of them, between one of them is just, uh, one of them is being bad altogether, or, and the other one is being good altogether. That's how it used I to be in the previous game. Yeah, I think it depends, I think it changes what, uh, stat bonuses you get, I'm not necessarily, That's true, actually. necessarily um, sure if you're, yeah, choosing one over the other. Like, I think Charm might be the, the second one, and maybe Creativity? Uh, would be the um, first or or fun maybe I don't know that but then that would be um, I think I think friendship bracelet is is more creativity than than fun no you depart on a holy quest of course the most powerful friendship bracelet of all time you craft the bracelet in the fires of moth girth and uh, uh, using an ancient threads of unicorn mane you strike it with your sick crafting hammer until your hands are colorless and bloodied you also make sure to pick pretty colors and you even sew in everybody's initials. Oh, so dope and actually, it looks so powerful and enticing. Wait, are we sure this isn't cursed? Because I've been tricked before. Don't worry, Avari, this is no curse. I feel it in my warrior soul. It's time to fuse, platonically. 
You loop the friendship bracelet on Dahlia and Avery's ankles, completing the platonic fusion. Dear gods, the power of friendship is pumping through our reins. Our legs have become our lag. The three-legged race is the only the beginning. With three legs, we can hold a camera with unparalleled level of steadiness. <laughs> <laughs> Turn yourselves into a tripod. Yes. We can finally play Mega Soccer. And pretend our third leg is a big penis. I don't know why she would want to do that, but okay. Well, yeah, we can even handle the most terrifying tests of interpersonal coordination, carrying a plate of spaghetti. How romantic. Wait a sec. You two uh, could have shattered spaghetti before you fused. Uh, not shattered, shared spaghetti. Uh, we could have been doing that this whole time. But could we have eaten spaghetti with our legs tied together? Ha, that's a whole new level of intimacy. You watch Dahlia and Aravi spit a plate of spaghetti. Dahlia handles the knife and Aravi handles the fork. You will completely forget about the race in your excitement and to eat pasta together, but it's so adorable that you gain plus two charm and plus one bonus anyway. Yay, I got hey. lots of good stats sets, apparently. All right, your turn. All right, it's Redacted's turn. Uh, where, have I ha where haven't I gone yet? Uh, I have gone to the lake, I've gone to the dome, I've gone to the... Have I gone to the... No, I haven't gone to the to this one in the forest, I think, maybe? Yeah, you know what? We haven't seen the forest yet. I'm gonna try that one. All right. While you're hiking through the woods, you find a little clearing with a beautiful blue pond. There's a very handsome man staring deeply into the pond. He's talking to his reflection like it's another person. A person he really wants to fuck. <laughs> So we've met Narcissus. Yeah, pretty much. You swipe his wallet while he's not looking and find out his name is Narcissus. Well, there you go. And he <laughs> is not an organ donor, asshole. And he's the one, he's one punch away from getting a free smart water at 7-Eleven. Hmm. Well, he's definitely not going to be using that anytime soon. You head to the gas station and gain plus two smarts for your smart water. Later, you're busy making your bionicles switch each other. <laughs> Until Calculester grabs you, Damien, and Dahlia, and leads you deep into the woods. Oh, dear. Uh, friends, thank you for responding to my behavior. I was trying my best to simulate severe distress. First off, greetings. I bestow my greetings. Hey. I have assembled you here because, as you can see, there is a critical plant emergency in the forest. These plants are failing to pollinate. The situation is dire. There is a 99.98% chance... Uh, likelihood that this will negatively affect the plant population of the woods. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Are we in the middle of a plant apocalypse? Dahlia, that is completely accurate. Also, I admire your word choice. Please, I need you three to help me save these botanical organisms. Plants? <laughs> plants are actually pretty fucking metal. Did you know that there are plants that can eat a whole car if you dare them to? I'm down to help. I am not certain that's accurate, but I am also excited that you have agreed to help me. I will also help. Hail Dahlia, savior of plants. Bah! Oh, and before I forget, I have just one question. What is pollinating? What is pollination and why does it matter even at all? Oh, that's an exciting question. Plant biology is one of my favorite internet search terms, so I'd be happy to give an explanation. Simply put, pollination is the act of transferring pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. <laughs> Wait, is pollination the reason why trees smell like jizz in the spring? I was getting the weirdest boners from the smell just yet. That's <laughs> oh, an interesting boy. through line. <laughs> pollen travels from one flower to another via animals or insects. We call animals or insects that transfer pollen from plant to plant pollinators. Damn, those pollinators just roll around from one flower to another, getting all covered in those pollen grains. Looking everyone in that filthy, filthy pollen. He's getting hot from this, isn't he? Probably. Once pollen is transferred between flowers, the flower can produce a seed. Seeds contain the genetic information to produce a new plant. Holy shit, pollination gets plants pregnant? Are you telling me that the pollination is just plant fucking? I am mildly aroused by pollination. We should help these plants immediately. Why is everybody so sexually overheated here? <laughs> Everyone's horny at Monster Camp. Time Pretty to much. take that mild arousal to a full-blown plant boner. Get these plants in the mood to pollinate, baby. All, All right. right. Got turn down the lights, play some smooth music, and install a TV that only plays B movie. These plants will be wet with pollen in no time. Ha! Or foreplay is key. Look for the nearest tree and start caressing its nuts. Hmm. I think that uh, I think that we need to show these plants to plants a thing or two about how to successfully pollinate each other. Yep. According to last month's Business Insider magazine, foreplay is key to any sexual encounter. You turn your attention to the nearest acorn tree. 
whip out the emergency vial of tree lube you always carry inside your back molar. Yes. And start gently caressing the tree's huge, hearty acorns. Whoa, that tree is obviously horny as fuck. What is this game? <laughs> Look at how hard its roots are getting. It didn't even know trees could even get that hard. Oh, uh, well, if you got a, 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 a coniferous tree, those are softwoods. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Keep going, Redacted. The other plants are watching you, and they appear to be experiencing sympathetic sexual arousal. You're a plant pleasuring master, so you finish off the acorn tree in no time, and it covers you in a massive amount of pollen. Oh no, my allergies. <laughs> Who needs bees? You can be your own bee. You roll around the forest, spreading pollen, caressing nuts, petals, roots, anything you can reach. You lose track of time and space. You forget your own name as your entire soul is consumed by the passion of this botanical orgy. I've already had my name yeah. redacted. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's it. kind of ironic that you don't have to lie name already. Tell the fucking memory of a goldfish it looks like. Gotta admit, I did not expect Redacted to be this good at fucking plants. I wonder if Redacted is as sexually talented with other species, like robots. Look at the, look at the screen! <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> or demons. Finally, you collapse on the ground panting. Every plant in the forest has been successfully and consensually pollinated. You smell weird. Congratulations, I guess. Redacted, thank you so much for that profound sexual display. You saved the plants. I have run the numbers, and I am happy to report that the world is now 7% safer from the impending climate crisis. Hey. Wow, you really fucked your way out of that problem. You gained a reputation as a love-making genius, along with plus two fun and plus one charm. Oh, look at that. I mean, so fun. Can I, can I really ask for anything more than being known as a love-making genius? I mean, I guess that's a pretty high compliment for sure. Alright, everybody chooses a movie. You say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Alright, uh, should I go first or should you want to go first? I can go first. Alright, go first then. I'm gonna go with... Uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Okay, um, I am gonna go with... Good, the Bad and the Ugly. Ooh, good choice. Alright, that's, that's one. Run out of ideas for tonight's campfire story. Play order is decided based on how easily you could fool your fellow campers by retelling this movie's plot without anyone noticing. Start debating now. I feel like my story is a lot more commonly known, so you would easily get away with um, just kind of remaking it with your own names and whatnot and then retelling it, so I guess you win this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't... But uh, like yeah. yours is like just just so unknown. I, I, I mean, not that unknown, but still definitely more unknown than mine. So, eh. yeah. Yeah, th play my love for obscure '80s anime. Yeah. So I guess I guess you win this one then. It works for me. Okay, so we are uh, over halfway now. That's campfires times again. You have to choose. Okay. So uh, you go first then. I'm gonna go say hello to these two. Oh boy, then I can choose Aravi. Freak. Well, okay. Later, you find Joy and Aravi hanging out near the campfire. This is normal. They've gathered around an eerie, blood-stained skull made entirely out of gold and valuable jewels. It looks priceless beyond words. This... beyond words. This isn't normal. It's so beautiful, right. and it looks anatomically accurate. I wonder if they use the real-life skull as a mold, and or if it's just an actual skull cast in gold. Either way, it's badass. Oh. So pretty that I don't want to eat it. I never felt this way before. Is this love, you guys? Is this feeling love? I mean, obviously this thing is both one, a dangerous magic object with incarnate power, and two, an insightful metaphor in about how capitalism entombs our minds in endless greed. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> you ask them what the fuck is up with this super wax skull. <laughs> oh, this? Isn't it obvious? It's a MacGuffin. That is, an object that's going to be very necessary to the plot and central to the motivation of the main characters. Joy's totally right. You have no idea what the skull is for, but you can feel the narrative importance radiating, radiating off of it. We're not really sure what the skull actually does, or where it comes from, or if it's cursed going to drive us into a fit of insanity that makes us eat our own hair. But literally, who cares? A MacGuffin this awesome is guaranteed to have a huge narrative payoff. They are always so satisfying. This is going to be such a good start to my next adventure. Um, excuse me? Did you just say your next adventure? 
Aravi, when we stumbled upon this golden skull on that strange altar in ruins of the Temple of Istus, I think it was pretty obvious it was there for me. I'm the main character. Ha! Ah, that's hilarious. Joy, sorry to burst your bubble, but you are definitely a beat your side character for comic relief. Your bit is that you think you are the main character. Wow, throwing shade. Yeah. I've got everything a main character needs. Emotional backstory, bloodlust, high DPS. <laughs> and now I'm going to add that six call to my inventory too. Arafi, I really do understand where you're coming from because my deep empathy is what makes me such a good leader and natural protagonist. But I'm afraid you're sorely mistaken. That skull is mine. I'm certain that it's going to inspire at least a three-episode arc, and it's way more in my genre than yours. You guys are both wrong. I'm the main character, this is the local multiplayer comedy dating sim video game, and the skull is made out of chocolate. He's right about one of those. <laughs> yeah. Whoever the main character is, you're sure of one of you're sure of one thing. It's not you. So help decide which one of these honeys gets that MacGuffin. I'm the main character. Oh, actually, oh it's you. Boy. Something this heavy is going to take up at least three inventory slots. Joy is the only one here with the requisite inventory space. Oh, did you just call her fat? Or, according to D&D Beyond, this item has a plus three constitution modifier and is best wielded by someone of the high armor class. Only Aravi could use it properly. Why is Aravi oh, having high armor? He's, she's, she's skinny as heck. She's wearing a tank top. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I mean, you know who you're going to go for, no? Uh, I mean, I guess I'll go for Joy, even though her attitude is kind of putting me off. But her body is putting me on. I see. <laughs> wow, redacted. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's actually factually correct and surprisingly reasonable. At least you didn't get mad for calling you, you calling her pet. Not to be rude or anything, it's just that usually when you contribute to our conversations, you spout some random absurd fictional bullshit. I'm beginning to regret giving you the skull. <laughs> yeah, you just not making a good point. <laughs> so what if I have a full inventory? I just do what I always do. I drop my least valuable items on the ground and pick up the skull. That's that's way too accurate for how I play games. Ravi opens up her inventory menu and starts scrolling through her 82 pages of items. Hmm. Alright, at least valuable items. Here we go. I mean, I guess I don't need two enchanted range short bows. I could just get rid of one of them. Are you kidding, Aravi? What if you're in battle against an enemy that's only vulnerable to shortbow attacks and your first short bow, the shirt first short bow breaks? You definitely need both of those. Wow, you're totally right. Okay, I can't believe I didn't think about that. Well, what about tossing my elixir of maximum heat hydration? It's really just a water bottle. No way in hell you can get rid of that. Sure, the elixir isn't worth much, but you want as many bottles as you can carry for catching fairies and saving leftover soup. That makes a lot of sense. Let me just scroll to this last page. See? Right here, I have three inventory slots full of expired hard candies. I just get rid of those and... Versus... No, you can't! I eat those hard candies all the time! Do you know what the delicious expired in emulsifier soil lets it in taste? Fine, ah, I give up. You know what, the skull may be valuable, but it's not worth letting go of many of my precious inventory items. You can have it. Come on, Ravi. Come on, Ravi. Let's go out of here. These people don't understand the value of inventory space, and also, I want a hot dog. You've already got a donut, though. It never, never Wait. disappears, apparently. Yeah. Wait, Aravi, before you go, I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for what I said okay, before. that was not bad. When it comes to hoarding an insane amount of inventory items, you're totally the main character. Hmm, <laughs> thanks, that means a lot. And have fun with this skull, I bet you're gonna have a really good plot arc with it, or whatever. Aravi and Hex leave to find the nearest hot dog merchant, and Joy lovingly caresses the ruby eyes of the MacGuffin. Thanks a lot for your help, Redacted. If I've been assuming that this MacGuffin would send me on a wild magical adventure. Such a climax. But now I'm kind of wondering if it's the start of our romantic subplot. Does this feel like an inciting incident to you, too? Score! You and Joy spend a few hours together, losing yourselves <laughs> in the thrall of the skull's ancient curse and each other's eyes. So close to sleep time, yet so far. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm actually gonna check out this guy here since you took Aravi. Uh, what the hell is this okay, thing? We 
Why, hello there, Gary. Come to write by the firelight as well. Uh, I'm writing a letter home to my parents. They've asked so many questions about camp. It's exhausting answering them all. Have you been brushing your antenna every day? Are you getting enough clothing fibers in your diet? <laughs> it's a moth, man. <laughs> Has Gary heard uh, any hot cast lady and would he be uh, so kind as to dish? Um, well, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be rude and not answer them, would I? I don't suppose you know anything, uh, you know, of anything I could write at home about. Damn, all your parents asked you about was if you had uh, enough pairs of stocks. If it's gossip, Mr. and Mrs. Man went, uh... That name, okay. It's gossip they'll get. Use yeah, a player to strike man. with your gossip skills. Uh, strike with your gossip skills? So you can either, uh, gossip about me or gossip about yourself. That's... I... Do I choose? It probably makes more sense when it's more than two, more than yeah. two characters. I mean, or more than two players. Do, if I choose myself, do I gossip about myself, or or do, I, do, you, do you gossip about me? But then, how? You, why are you holding this think, in my turn? I think if you choose yourself, then you gossip about yourself. But if you choose me, then you gossip about me. Oh, I'm not a dick, so I'm gonna gossip about myself. Uh, choose one. Very witty remarks. A lot of confetti. A bigger knife. Big old tome of erotic Italian poetry. That sounds cool as heck. Let's go with that. Okay, what? What am I choosing? I don't know. I don't understand what's going on here. Choose one. A very outdated meme. A very middle finger. Someone else's as his mom's face. A skateboarding dog. A clear metaphor of love and help, death. Um, I, I go with the outdated meme because heck yeah. I've been a celebrity who peaked in the nineties. Nineties does. Does Jim Carrey count? Uh, sure. I don't think he's doing much now. I mean, he did the Sonic movie. Uh, I didn't see it. Is it was alright. I wouldn't really say that the Sonic movie was Jim Carrey's peak, though. I mean, no, not not peak, but it said that he's not so, inactive yeah. or anything. Wow, so many salacious details. My mother is going to brush straight through her fuzz. I can't wait to tell everyone in my family about your story, Gary. Thanks. The gossip weaves it its way through the rumor and mo rumor mill and comes spitting out the other end like so. What the hell? Who the hell is this guy? Hey, has anyone told no. you the news about Gary yet? Well, have you ever wondered why he never takes his shirt off? I heard it's because he has a secret scar on his upper back. Apparently, it is big, and if you look at it carefully, you can tell that it kind of looks like a very outdated me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy, right? But it's even crazier how he got the scar. He was at a cafe when his order was ready, there was an unexpected turn of events, and the barista wrote Gary's name so wrong that it actually read Jim Carrey. And guess what? Jim Carrey was also at that cafe. <laughs> I mean, Gary and, and Carrey isn't that different, so I mean, it's actually yeah, it somewhat <laughs> yeah, working. So both, yeah, Gary and, yeah. so both Gary and Jim Carrey claimed that the beverage and the only one way out of the situation was, of course, through an old-fashioned duel to the death. Wow, I fought Jim Carrey to the death, huh? Not so well known fact, Jim Carrey wields the switching blade like an angel and they fitted that fatal scar. <laughs> uh, Jim Carrey wields the tongue that is uh, probably sharper than anything, so, you know, <laughs> that's probably better than a switchblade. Yeah, I can but, see that. But you know how they say never bring a knife to a gunfight? Well, Gary may <laughs> say always bring a thick old tome of erotic Italian product to a gunfight because he fought back with that. And Jim Carrey totally kicked their ass. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Gary will ever show anyone his scar. Do you think seeing it would change your opinion of him? Oh, I like those stuff. But regardless of how Scar would hypothetically uh, make uh, you feel, yeah. Gary's reputation is very non -hip hypothetically altered by this rumor by minus four creativity. God, that's that's not good. Wow, I suck. That's, that's brutal. Yeah, pretty much. I guess we'll take a gamble again. You were waiting uh, uh, all week to this moment, visiting Juan and getting a good drink. Juan, sorry. Look, well, look, look at what the cat dragged it. I have some drinks here for you. It's up to you. To, it's up to you which one to drink. Let's see what's behind door number one. Quite this appealing, is right? You, by the way. I drink that, but the real question is, will you? You know, this is actually a part of you, right? Because you are the uh, the, the basically darkness or like fear. Uh, I'm uh, embodied, yeah, and true. The, you have these guys that's on their back all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what those little things coming off of me were. Yeah. If they, if they think your own self? Is, is it like you know Bruce Willis? Oh, no, Bruce Willis. Uh, but it's called uh, Bear Guilds drinking his own piece. Maybe. I'm gonna take him. We'll see what happens. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your prize is the drink you chose. 
Whisky. It's just whiskey. It's just whiskey. It's whiskey. Also, this mystery box. No, oh, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm, need, I'm needing the whiskey. Give me some good old whiskey. Liquid courage, as they say. Yep. I definitely need more creativity, uh, but uh, the mystery box probably wasn't gonna help. Alright, so let's see. Behold, a potion that looks like whiskey. Its power is to taste and smell like whiskey. Nothing else. Cool beans. I have this suspicion that I just made whiskey. I'm thirsty. How do you make whiskey? Nothing, Nothing happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Phobia shots. Let's do some phobia shots. Yeah, you know what they say. If you can't overcome your fears, drink them. Cheers to you. Doing that is surely bold. Let's do this. Ace. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. Of course you got a more bold of it. Anyway, to a food. This is off the charts. Yep, you're 12 and with fun as well, which is pretty high. Uh, say your choice out loud to another person before clicking. Alright, I go first this time, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna go with... Uh, so I'm gonna choose ice cream. What did you choose? I'm gonna choose pizza. Because that's what okay. I'm having for lunch. So player order is decided based on which food would destroy a prehistoric human's digestive system if they brought it back in time. Start eating now. I mean, I oh, it, it would totally be ice cream. They can't handle dairy. Yeah. Or that much sugar. Uh, yeah, probably not. That's also super cold. They probably don't eat anything that cold that back then. They try to like heat everything up. All right, so I'm yeah. winning, I guess. Put those fire skills to use. Yep. Okay, three more turns. Come on. Okay, I need to. Yep. I I don't know. Okay, I'm, if I'm still going for Aravi, I definitely need. I don't know. Creativity would matter. I also don't want to be no super, I'm super not a big fan of Sundere characters, so I have no idea what they actually like. I, I, I literally don't know who I wait for anymore. Um, I'm gonna go for fun. I'm just not gonna bother, be bothered about creativity, I guess. So, where, where is fun? Uh, this thing. I haven't been to the lakes anyway. Oh, I lost my head. Cool. That's mighty disturbing. You're in the lakes, some bad thing. It's kind of relaxing, but hella boring. What's the issue? Have you lost your ability to have some fun unless you are playing video games or partying in wild race? I, I'm actually scared that that's the case, yeah. Uh, oh no! <laughs> uh, you, you see the problem now. You didn't put on a sunscreen, but fun screen, which has a fun protection factor of 50. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. You wash the fun screen away with some water and put on some sunscreen. There you go, you prevent some sunburn and you gain plus two fun. Yay. Alright, what's that? Oh, so Dahlia apparently has just chosen to be with me, I guess. So I'm guessing it's better that I don't go for creativity since she looks like she would be bold and maybe fun. Uh, Gary, hi, what are you doing? Not important, it's time to kill winter. Oh, we already killed the spring, so we killed winter now, cool. I tracked her down. Her name is Bruma, and she lives in Alaska in a palace made of ice and crude oil. Let's go! You hesitate for a moment because Alaska sucks, but Dahlia triggers a travel montage before you can object. One plane, one bus, and one town downtown drive ride later, you uh, stand before the place, uh, palace of uh, the Herald of Winter. The port coolies opens with a tremendous grating noise. Who dares approach my sanctum? Follows the Herald, who knows... Uh, who looks like as if I'm frozen, but uh, wearing a Christmas sweater and pleasant with the words This is not copyright infringement <laughs> It is I, Dahlia Aquino, and I have come on behalf of the Herald of Summer to melt you into fluid Foolish mortal, says Elsa, I mean Bruma You cannot defeat the mighty winter, it is by far a superior season What? Impossible! Summer has all the best things, revealing swimsuits, sweating profusely, the Summer Olympics Indeed, says Bruma. <laughs> uh, but winter has bitter cold, not being able to go outside, and the Winter Olympics. Curses, she's right. Damn those figure skaters and their sexy ice bikinis. <laughs> yes, you cannot stand against me, smiled Bruma. Now run along, I have lunch with Sarah Pauline. <laughs> oh god. No, you can't give up so easily. Surely there must be a way to ruin winter and defeat its herald. Wait, you've got it. Invite all her relatives to holiday dinner and then ambush them with politics. Oh god. Shocks. Give her sh socks. What? There, there is nothing better than socks. A truly fiendish plan. Here, use my emergency socks. Sorry, that's your line. You ask her why she carries around a pair of emergency socks. They're endlessly useful. You can fill them with quarters and use it as a, bla as a blackjack or turn it into a sock puppet and keep yourself company while stranded on a desert island. And if you ever find yourself a lot of socks to wear, you can use an emergency sock as a ski mask and rob a sock store. Okay. But of course, the most powerful use of all is to give them as a gift to your enemy, thus totally demoralizing them because they expected something better. <laughs> okay, that's that's Christmas all right, yeah. Quick, put them in an elaborately wrapped box and affix a thoughtful note. That'll show her. All right. Um, 
You do as instructed and quickly present Bruma with uh, a gift. What's this, she says? A present? For me? Just a moment ago, you were all about fight, but I'm so delighted I've forgotten all about that. Let's see what's inside, shall we? Oh my, it's socks! I love socks! They're so warm and soft, and all these <laughs> on ones I have little snowflakes on the side uh, to match my aesthetics. They give Daria a side, uh, sidelong look. What? They were the only blue socks in the store. I'm blue. I only buy blue socks. Whatever the reason, I'm touched by this thoughtful gift. Not only the socks, but this beautiful note. What did you write in that note, Gary? Something demoralizing, I hope? Oh no, nothing like that. He just, uh, he wants to sex me real good. <laughs> and touch all my gorgeous blue muscles. What? But what about my blue muscles? What about sexing me real good? Oh, fuck. You accidentally switched uh, your gift note with the uh, love note you were planning to give to Dahlia later. Oh no. Oh, I see boy. it all so clearly now. You two were working together to undermine me all along. I've been betrayed. It's time for plan B. The B stands for beatdown. Oh boy. A moment ago you were plotting to kill Winter with your hot friend Dahlia, and now you're getting punched in the face in Alaska. <laughs> I've come at you fast. <laughs> yep. So do Dahlia's fists. You lose two charm and one wholeness. God. And any hope of uh, establishing uh, somewhere as the ruler of all seasons. Boo. Come on. Oh boy, I'm, it's, I'm going downhill fast. Alright, uh... I just, uh, do I bump my creativity, or do I do I go for min maxing? Uh, you know, what the hell? We'll uh, we'll bump the creativity a bit. Nice. That day in Monster Scouts, you all learn how to build scarecrows. That's vaguely nature related, right? You decide to take a step for take it a step farther though. You add a magical crystal you found in a cave last month to your scarecrow to turn it into a sentient being. The scarecrow is very grateful to have been, to have been made alive. You take your new friend out for a soda and have a very pleasant afternoon. Then you're forced to disassemble them so the next group of scouts can use the materials. Your scarecrow begs you not to relinquish your gift of life, but you're a dedicated monster scout first. The scouts appreciate your dedication to the organization. You're awarded plus two creativity. That's a weird way to get creative points, but okay. Yeah. You spot Calculester tending to his ant farm. He's so cute when he's manipulating the lives of thousands of organic life forms. Could I be uh, Calculester? Uh, if you want to. Alright, hello friend detected. Perhaps your visit will bring joy to my ants. Hmm, no, I don't understand. Organic beings are supposed to love social contact, but these ants seem quite antisocial. I even tried introducing them to hugging, but it mostly just killed them. <laughs> Perhaps we can sing them s uh, some songs about friendship? I believe it is easier to learn lessons through songs. Dramatic entrance! That was my dramatic entrance. Are you impressed? It was certainly dramatic. <laughs> Thank you. I've been practicing. Anyway, are you ready for our ant battle? I do not recall agreeing to such a thing. Really? I could have sworn I was staring intensely at you earlier while my internal monologue insisted that my ants must defeat your ants. You stared back with such unblinking intensity that I knew you must be thinking the same thing. Friend Dahlia, I never blink. It is because I do not have eyes. <laughs> this expression here. Then it's settled. Our ants will engage in glorious combat. Watch out, though. I've been training my ants tirelessly to defeat you. Look. Look how buff they've become. Dahlia unveils her ant farm. It's full of Asian longhorned beetles. <laughs> oh my god. Train hard, Calculester. Next time you meet, I won't go easy oh on you. Oh, gosh. oh dear, I never agreed to this fight and my ants are severely outmatched. Yet somehow I feel duty bound to participate in this contest. <laughs> well, Please be so swayed. Is this, by the way, the, the uh, like death sound of R2-D2 from Star Wars? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Please be directed. Help me find a way to save my ants from certain death and the hands of Daria's beetles. Alright, we gotta think creatively. Don't engage them in direct combat. Challenge them to a space race. It worked during the Cold War. It'll work for an ant war. Or use your diplomatic skills to show the ants and beetles their true enemy, the warlike Dahlia. Ooh, both of these are really good. Yeah, but it probably depends on which one of your skills is better. I'm guessing charming uh, is probably the second one, and the first one is, like, smart. Yeah, I think they're both pretty equal as far as stats go. So I think I'm going to go with the diplomatic skills. All right. Ah, uh, nope. Not so charming. Oh boy. 
I kind of spoiled the moment you can see the changes early. Yeah, you can do this. You once did diplomacy with some spiders in high school. Ants and beetles are nothing. You managed to distract Dahlia by telling her there's a tree in the forest she hasn't punched yet and are soon face to face with the beetle's president. You tell him the same thing you told the ants queen. The real enemy isn't other insects. It's the cruel dictator who's forcing them to fight their formic brethren. You're not sure whether you've gotten through to them because beetles can't speak or understand language, but a few days later, it's time to put your diplomacy to the test. All right, you scrubs. It's time for us to see who the real ants are. That's all you wanted to figure out. The answer is clearly my ants because your ants are beetles. Your propaganda has no effect on me, Calculester. Have at you. Wait, what's happening? The ants aren't fighting each other. They're charging towards me? Redacted. You backstabber. Did you use diplomacy to turn my own ants against me? Deal, not ants, but okay. <laughs> ants, listen to me. I am not your enemy. Your true enemy is redacted. Think, damn you. Who's been lurking in the shadows, urging you down this path of violence? A path that will only end in death and destruction for both sides, but mostly your side, because you are bugs and I am a huge buff demon babe. <laughs> Instead of struggling pointlessly against my hot blue fist, let us unite against the shadowy figure behind it. Oh, onward! Oh no, redacted. Friend Ali has made a compelling point. I'm disappointed and around by your uh, warmongering ways. Wow, I really messed this one up. You try to explain that your intentions were good, but it's hard to explain anything with so many bugs in your mouth. Your anguish had disappointing Calculester is soon eclipsed by the horror of being attacked by a ton of little bugs and one big Dahlia. Oh boy. It hurts quite a bit, especially the Dahlia part of it. You lose two boldness and one fun. Oh man. You're going badly. Uh, it's not a good oh, ending these, to this. These later, these later scenarios are tough. Yeah, because if, if you don't if you don't minimax and you don't have like a choice that you actually have high points in, you usually just lose out on the earlier. It's kind of hard to, you know, lose them. I probably choose yeah. an object. Uh, say your choice out loud to the other person before clicking. Yes, my... Okay, you go You go first. Alright, I'm gonna go with a watch. Watch, okay. I'm gonna go with the glass. Like a, like a, like a glass that you drink out of. Okay. Player hey, orders decided this? based on which object would be the most useful new Swiss army knife attachment. Start debating now. Hey, what was yours again? Uh, a wristwatch. Watch. Yeah, okay, that's definitely yours then. I mean... A glass is a drinking vessel, which is used for storing water, but it doesn't but have a it, cover. It doesn't, it doesn't really, like, I don't think you can fit a glass inside a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, you could uh, fit uh, a Swiss Army knife inside a glass, though. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know, I mean... Um, actually, I mean, I don't Swiss Army knives already have clocks in them? Pretty sure some of them some do, them yeah. Do. They have, like, one well, end, guess... they have, like, a, like a, a compass, the other end, they have, like... Block or something. Right. All right. I guess we'll go with me then. Yeah, you go first. There is also totally a random button that we could be picking, but it's not quite as fun. I hope yeah. All right. I got a. I got a. The last turn, I think. So we have left two. No one. The last. The last day, I think, is just they were actually choosing. So this is probably the last oh, one. God. I gotta boost my shit. Um... Which one would Dahlia want? <sighs> if you are going for her, that is. Yeah, I don't even. You have very good uh, charms with uh, Calculester and Dahlia so far, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna... Do I try to reboost charm? Because I'm kind of down on those points. I think I'm gonna try to boost fun. I don't know what that'll get me, but... I'm just gonna min-max my highest stat and go from there. Alrighty. That day you decided to go scuba diving and find a treasure chest at the bottom of the lake. Whoa! You pick the lock, which is quite impressive if you keep in mind that you're still underwater. Inside you find over 1,000 fun! Unfortunately, your wetsuit doesn't have pockets, so you can so you can go only go back to the shore with only two fun. When you get when you go back, fish have eaten the rest. They're having a rave right now. Fucking fish. <laughs> okay. But that's all top bullshit compared to what you really at camp for. Intimate moments with your synthetic crush calculester. You slip away at the first possible moment so you can spend the afternoon with him, romantically going through a book of photographs and telling him which ones are faces. <laughs> he leads in to get a higher resolution view of one of your of one of the images, bringing his face within inches of your face. The moment is unmistakable. You lean in, kiss him tenderly on the screen. It tastes like television. You rub your lips and tongue passionately across the slightly warm glass surface, but he's not kissing you back. Well, that's not cool. What are you doing, Reducted? Are you attempting to clean my screen? 
Allow me to provide you with a moist different disinfectant wipe. No, you explain, a bit embarrassed that you're having <laughs> you're trying to kiss him. Oh, a kiss! I'm delighted to add this with one of my tell of formative adolescent experiences. And yet, though I like it very much, I cannot help but think that this kiss was not as arousing for me as it was for you. Oh man. <laughs> Kissing, you see, requires a mouth, which I do not have. I am glad that the hyper-realistic mouth on my screen fooled you, but it is only <laughs> a sim simulacrum. That, that high real highly realistic parentheses. Yes, exactly. I experience uh, similar problems when attempting eating, and I don't even get me started on pooping. You'd rather not. It's already kind of ruining the romantic mood. What you really need is some other way to emotionally slash physically connect with Calculester. But what's the robotic equivalent to smooching? Come on, you've spent your whole horny life training for a situation like this. Well then, this is your make or break uh, moment. Oh boy. Uh, upload an image of your lips to his hard drive via the most intimate medium, a three and a half inch floppy drive. Floppy? Uh, That's smart, probably. Or whisper beautiful numbers to each other. Probably charm. Oh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think the second one would be more charming. Yeah, this person is more smart, which you have more of. Yeah. If anything, this might pass for you. I think, I, yeah, I think I'm going to go with uh, the first one. Oh, man. Oh. You take your you lose something? highest definition picture of your juicy mouth pillows and immediately discard it because it is too hard for fly. Damn, I didn't think of that. Can't you just compress it? In fact, all of your lip pics are too high res for a floppy. Curse your propensity for taking only the best quality selfies. You refuse to debase your gorgeous lips with image compression, so the only remaining solution is to find another way to kiss, to fit a kiss onto a floppy. You use binary, but the only number you know in binary is 1000116169 in base 10, and that seems too forward. Wait, you got the perfect idea. Now is the time to resurrect the ancient noble art of ASCII. Spend about four minutes working on an image of your lips made entirely of backslashes and at symbols before losing patience and replacing it with... <laughs> that. With all the spaces saved via your genius scheme, you're also able to include two whole megabytes of kissy onomatopoeia. You present your disc to Cal, flushed with thirsty pride. Oh, a three and a half inch floppy! I had no idea you were such a romantic, I'll spend it right away. See, that's... Floppies are nice. Processing? Processing? Hmm, I'm not sure I understand. Oh. Is this really frog-like emoticon meant to represent your face and lips? Maybe. You nod excitedly. What mm -hmm. about this enormous list of nonsense words including mwah, smork, and oh yeah, I'm kissing you so good. Slurp, slurp, and zumpa, <laughs> zumpa. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Those are kissing words, you tell him. Does he feel kissed yet? In as so much as I feel anything at all, I think it is something akin to the romantic alienation indie rock singers are so often croon about. Oh no. Thank you, Reducted, for helping me experience a new and painful emotion. I am afraid, however, that it is, doesn't make me horny for you. <laughs> oh boy. God. I'm making all the wrong choices. <laughs> Calculus leads you to do some soul searching. You need to do some soul searching too, mostly about why you thought Humpa Dumpa was a kissing sound. You lose two charm and one fun. <laughs> Damn, oh man. boy. Okay. Um, man, I am not doing good on stats for an endgame event like this. Uh, I'm gonna go for just boldness, I guess. Does it, is it even available anymore? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for bold. That day you venture into a haunted manor and prove that you are not a little scaredy cat. Uh, the manor transforms itself into a vanning maze out of or which there is no escape. You'll be trapped here forever. Luckily, you brought other. Broke your phone and some snacks, so you sit down and play solitaire until the house gets bored of you and shows you to the exit. <laughs> Turns out that the best defense against the supernatural is total apathy. You gain two boldness. Yay. That makes sense. Yep. Later that night, you get all gizzed up uh, for your date with Dahlia. She said she had some intense physical activities planned. Vuga. However, when you go find her, you are surprised to see her surrounded by a horde of demonic soldiers. Oh, hey, Gary. Listen, I've got some bad news. I forgot I volunteered to army sit my buddy General Zaxklar's hellish armies tonight. I'm sorry, I can't dodge this responsibility, but I'll make it up to you. Maybe you could help me watch them tonight. 
Right now, I'm cooking them a nutritious meal of gruel and enemy blood formula. We couldn't get the fresh stuff on such short notice, but this powder substitute is pretty... As she's speaking, one of the one of the soldiers pulls meek, meekly on Dahlia's sleeve. Um, is General Aquino? <laughs> he says, I gotta go potty. <laughs> Uh, I told you all to go before you left hell. Fine. Anyone who has to go with, come with me and bring a trowel and bury your poopies. <laughs> Gary, maybe you could figure out a way to entertain the little war machines while I'm gone. Then we might be able to spend some alone time together. Oh boy. Every day in this universe tests your patience. Well, whatever. If it means alone time with Dahlia, you can find a way to destroy the giant evil darlings for an hour. What sort of... Uh... Activities should you give the demonic soldiers to do so and Dahlia can make love, not war. <laughs> Put some soothing war propaganda on the TV to entertain and distract them. Keep them busy by giving them an assignment, a personal essay about their experiences with city pill pillaging. I'm guessing the first, the second one would be smarts, which I'm very low on, but creativity is, is probably the first one, which I'm even low lower on. Man, this is not a good setup for me. I mean, if I'm thinking like child allegories. I'd probably get pretty bored by writing a personal essay. Yeah. Okay, I I I do and hopefully they'll enjoy the TV show. You run you run your idea yeah. past Dahlia when she returns. Um hey not bad. Let's go check the welcome storage cabin. Oh sorry this is your line. <laughs> hey, uh Hey, not bad. Let's go check the camp storage cabin. I think I saw some old propaganda VHS tapes last time I was there. Oh boy. Yeah going alone into the storage cabin. You two head over to check out the old storage cabin for some materials. Okay, let's see. We've got Pillaging Treasure Planet, Oliver and the Company Coal Mine, The Little Mermaid Buys a Third Liberty Loan. Ha! <laughs> ah, here's a classic. The Pinocleotariat Beheads the Aristocrats. I watched this so many times as a kid. Well, that explains a lot about Dahlia's outlook on the Laveys, at least. You bring a couple VHSs and the... Uh... Shepherd the army man into a camp auditorium. There you make them cozy with some blankets and clockwork orange, I speculate, for <laughs> to ensure maximum fun uh, while absorbing the propaganda film. Oh God. Everyone loves it. They sing <laughs> along with their favorite propaganda songs and giggle at the uh, Pinocletariat's uh, impassioned speech against the Bibbity Bobbity Bourgeois. Bur Good work, Glary. This should keep them occupied long enough for us to have a bit of alone time. Fuck yeah, you two sneak off to get a physical together, using the workout regimen that Dahlia specifically designed for you. Well, it's not uh -oh. exactly what you were expecting, but it's a very sweet gesture and intimate in its own way. You also gain two fun and one charm. Yay, I'm not completely nice. horrible at that. Alright, last dice here. You are the first to go. Oh, Who God. are you taking? Uh... And go with yourself, which is <laughs> kind of weird, but okay. Oh yeah, it's just none of them. <laughs> mm. It only works with like uh, certain storylines and whatnot because they're like you're gonna get like certain story plots. I mean, Calculester's all right, but he's more of a bro than a romantic interest. A tough choice. I'm gonna go with Dahlia. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Shoot my shot. I just took Dahlia, so I have no real chances with anybody, I guess. Um, Were can you I going for a Ravi? Can I? I can escort Dahlia as well. Ha! Oh God! I, I I didn't. I think that was not a possibility in the previous game, so I want to see how this goes. Okay. Let's see. I guess you're fighting at the end then. <laughs> you finally gather the courage and uh, ask your belt to watch the meteor shower with you. Oh, it's your your turn to click. Us as a summer fling. But you know I want to have the best summer ever. Oh. I have this feeling that dating you would make it the most mess summer ever. Oh, oh boy. You're not a true <sighs> You got rejected got by your summer crush. <laughs> so what, I'm guessing I'm, I'm probably gonna get rejected as well at this rate, I feel. You will accomplish great things in life that will make this failure pale in comparison. Well, you actually don't accomplish anything remarkable. Because of this, 71 years from today, when you die, they're, they're at a loss for what to put on your gravestone. They settle for redacted, lived in mad life, under broom, got rejected at summer camp. <laughs> I like how you lost your fucking name. <laughs> yeah, don't I don't even have anything name on my tombstone. <laughs> oh boy, you just got the worst ending ever, Jesus Christ, that's harsh. You finally gather your courage and ask your belt to watch the meteor shower with you. Summer fling? I see now, it's a warfare tactic. 
My enemies will think I have lowered my guard and they will try to attack me during that night. Little do they know, they, we will be ready waiting for them and you and me, Gary, we will unleash utter mayhem and take all those bastards down. I'm in, let's start making preparations. Oh boy, I didn't get turned down. How the heck? I'm only at wow. 10 boldness. You have, wait, what? You had 10 boldness and... Oh, you're, maybe I your charm. I think look for a different stat. I think your charm was not enough because there's usually like two and three stats that couldn't go into it, not just one. Yeah. I think your charm was a bit lower than it should have been, maybe that's why. Anyway, let's I see what's coming out of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I messed up two tests, so I was like really afraid that I would just not hit the mark. Uh, cool, you hope you can help me her to change the plans so it's just the date portion of it. <laughs> there you go, and the last day of camp was awesome! Nadia designed a sexy weightlifting regimen to do together. I already did that though. Uh, it's focused a lot on strengthening the glutes and pelvis. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I did winky face. Alright, and there's the results we've got. Um, okay, let's see how many summer memories you get out of this thing. Actually, you got quite a bit. I didn't expect that many. Okay. Alright, that, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, you need so, a yeah, thousand like for the runs. special costumes, yeah. Uh, I mean, you get less and less because you unlock more and more. Like, I think there's like multipliers on how many events you unlock and whatnot, but still, it shouldn't take uh, too many okay. runs to actually get that. And new special stuff is what we've got as well, so that's kind of cool. And yep, that's, I guess, the our first monster prom uh, camp together. Before Let's we knew see. it, in those weeks we were gone, uh, it felt like a hot minute and it felt like an entire lifetime. And that night we saw summer coming to an end and we all wondered what could come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, uh, life still had many wonders and misadventures, misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how these years become the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned to tragedies, sung for centuries, wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. And there we go. Oh, yeah, that was our first uh, monster camp together, and uh, monster camp just in general, I guess. So, what, what did you think about it? Uh, I'll have to work harder to actually uh, to figure actually out the mechanics and whatnot. Yeah, I, I mean, it really helped that we kind of just. Screwed the last one. Yeah. Again, like it doesn't really help. The producer on this. <laughs> it's like how the calculator has the uh, thing over <laughs> his screen. But yeah, I mean, um, I think one of the issues was that uh, we were kind of just switching between a lot of different girls. Um, so like, you know, like we, we had uh, we had Aravi, we had Dahlia, uh, who was the chubby girl again? I keep forgetting her name. Uh, Joy. Yeah, Joy. It was Joy, and there was Calculester for you as well. Which means that, you know, usually divided um, attention or just like preferences lead up to none of them really liking you. Because the if it works like in this previous game, which I don't know, um, then it works like that you don't, you don't only need to have certain stats to win the game, but you also need to have um, like specific amounts of sort of hearts with the certain character, which is earned by getting uh, right in their, you know, events and whatnot. So, yeah. That, that, yeah. I think it was, uh, I think my character traits were pulling hard towards uh, Calculuster, and uh, yeah. I just wasn't into him, and that kind of screwed me over. I don't know if I, you probably could have uh, like been it if, if calculus if you would have, if you would have chosen calculister. Oh yeah, probably. Although that, that last event kind of screwed me over, but I gotta yeah. I gotta learn to min max more. Yeah. And also learn what each of the each of the other characters likes. Yeah, but yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's also I like these animations a lot. They're kind of cute. All right, so um, I don't know. This was a fun ride, so maybe we'll be back. Who knows? Maybe either with this or the uh, first episode of Monster Prom or Monster whatever. Uh, yeah, but yeah, for trying it again. Yeah, uh, we will see about that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and hope you guys enjoyed as well. We we'll see you again with some uh, cool stuff next time as well. And uh, yeah, I'll say my goodbye here. See you, everyone. Take uh, care.